Hey there, today we'll be looking at a very common interview problem which is based around algorithmic thinking. And I came across this problem for the first time when I was giving an interview for an internship that I had applied at Microsoft. And also a lot of my students have told me that they were asked the same problem while they were giving interviews for jobs at multiple companies. So let's go through the problem statement first. The problem says that there are 100 identical balls out of which only one has odd weight and the rest of the 99 have the same weight. Now you are given access to a classic beam balance and you need to find the minimum number of weighings required on the beam balance to find out the ball with the odd weight. Now let's see how you can use a beam balance to compare the weights of balls. So these are the three scenarios that can be there. If I just take a pair of balls out of the set and name them A and B, the following three scenarios can occur. Either B is heavier than A, in that case the beam balance will tilt towards the right. If both have the same weight then it will be balanced and if A is heavier than B then it will be tilted towards the left side. And just from this much information we can come to our first approach towards this problem which is the most basic or the most naive approach. So what we do here is take a pair of balls out each time and compare them against each other. If the weights are equal then we put them to the side and then pick on the next pair. Now this approach will definitely work but the problem with this approach is that the worst case scenario will be that the last pair of balls left in the set has the odd ball. So in that case you'll have to make 50 comparisons just to reach to that last pair which has the odd ball. So using this naive approach you'll have to use the beam balance 51 times in the worst case which is not an ideal solution to the problem. And if you tell the interviewer this answer you'll probably be rejected. So now let's look at the other approach which is divide and conquer. Now divide and conquer is a very common algorithmic approach towards a problem and the one that we'll be trying out first is called binary search. I'm sure a lot of you might be aware of the binary search algorithm. The algorithm basically says that divide your set into two halves and figure out which set has the odd ball and then divide that set further into two groups and so on and so forth till you find the odd ball. So here let's divide a set of 100 balls into two groups of 50 balls and let's compare them against each other. Now definitely one of the sides will go down because the odd ball will be present on either the right or the left side. But if you carefully think this approach has a problem and the problem arises because the problem statement says that we don't know whether the ball is weighing more or less. So let's say if the right side goes down, we cannot say with certainty that this side has the odd ball. It might also be the case that the ball is lighter and is actually on the left side. So from now on, we can divide a problem into two parts. The first part is to figure out if the odd ball is heavy or light. Now this part is important because otherwise we won't be able to tell during a comparisons which side has the odd ball. Once we figure out if the odd ball is heavy or light, our problem will become very easy and we will be able to solve it using binary search. So let's go ahead and see how we can figure out the first part. To do that, we'll divide our set of 100 balls into three sets of 33 balls. We tried dividing into two groups of 50 but that didn't work out. So naturally the next step should be to try dividing into three groups. Since 100 is not directly divisible by 3, what we do is we take out one ball and keep it on the side and then the remaining 99 are divided into three of 33 each. And now we'll just take two out of these three groups and compare them against each other. So let's say the first and the second group are equal in weight. So as a next step what we do is we compare the second group and the third group. Now if these two are also equal this would give rise to our best case scenario and the best case scenario is none of the three groups had the odd ball which automatically makes the ball which we kept aside in the beginning our odd ball so hence by just doing two comparisons you were able to find out the odd ball now this is our best case scenario what we need to figure out is how many comparisons are needed in a worst case scenario So let's say when we were comparing group 2 and 3 instead of them being equal group 3 had more weight and it tilted the beam balance down. So now we know that the group 3 is having the odd ball and that odd ball is heavier. So just by doing these two comparisons in the beginning we'll be able to figure out if the odd ball is heavy or light. So these two comparisons in the beginning are really important and from now on it's just a simple binary search. So what we'll do now is to take out this group and then divide it into two parts now again if it's an odd number you will keep one ball on the side 
and then divide that even number into two groups. So this group of 33 which has the heavier ball will now be divided into two groups of 16 and one ball will just be kept on the side. Now again we'll compare these two groups of 16s with each other. If they are equal it will mean that the ball that we kept on the side is the odd ball and if they are not equal then one of these group will be heavier in weight and let's say this one is and then again we'll be repeating the step and we'll be dividing this group of 16 into two groups of eight now and we'll keep on continuing this pattern until only two balls are left in the end so when we divide into two groups of eight let's say the group on the left side weighs more so now we'll go ahead and divide this group into two which is two groups of four and then again we'll be comparing them against each other and one of them will definitely be heavier and so we'll divide this group of four balls into two groups of two balls and then we'll reach our last comparison where let's say the two balls on the left side are heavier then we'll just again divide them into one ball on each side and this will be our last comparison and one of these balls will be heavier and we'll be having the odd ball and we would have successfully found our odd ball in the worst case scenario now let's count how many comparisons we had to make in our worst case scenario so obviously the first part is mandatory and we had to do two comparisons to figure out if the ball was heavier or lighter. After that each of these levels represent just one comparison. So after the two comparisons here on the top, the part from where the binary search begins has only one comparison for each level. So we can just now count out all of them. So after two this was the third comparison, then this was the fourth and so on this was the fifth sixth and the last one was the seventh one where we were able to find out the odd ball so in our worst case scenario we need seven comparisons in total on the beam balance to figure out the odd ball which is our major upgrade from our naive approach so if you remember the naive approach we had 51 comparisons in our worst case to figure out the odd ball but using the divide and conquer approach that i just showed you you were able to do it in seven steps